Hello everyone! Welcome to another Star Drive campaign. This time we're going to play as the Chuck affiliation. The Chuck are fertile, so they have a increased uh, fertility rate, population growth. They are peerless space fighters, so that they have a huge bonus to weapon ship damage. Just crazily huge. And crazily huge. Yeah, I just make up, I make up English words. Put that in the dictionary. And crazily. Um, subterranean, they get bonus population on all worlds because they're subterranean race to just kind of burrow down, I guess, and continue their expanding. And then we got a poor home world, and they're also repulsive. So we're not going to have much in the way of um, positive relations with the other races in the world. But that's okay because we just are going to expand like crazy. We have so many people. Uh, hopefully that will get us through. The poor home world kind of sucks, but we'll just deal with it. I, I want to just go with their default here. So we're going to hit continue. Let's change to... Mm, we did red before. Let's go with gray. I don't know. Let's chalk this up to eight people. Difficulty is going to be on hard. And let's make... Let's make the slaver race very aggressive. I think that makes sense. They're slaver races. Let's make the samurai bears aggressive. And the Volfer Imperium aggressive. And then I'm going to try random personalities. But since we checked them out as aggressive, hopefully that will override whatever random personality personalities assigned to them. And for system count, I kind of want this to be a smaller game. Let's go with 50 systems. And then let's try the cluster setting this time. And we'll leave everything else as it is. So hopefully this will be kind of an intense, quick game with only 50 systems with 8 races on hard. We'll see. I've not played a game like this yet. There's the background for the Chuck Affiliation. Um, I did play the Chuck Affiliation very briefly on a stream once, uh, in case you caught that. It went terribly. just went so bad. Anything that could happen against us happened. There was pirates everywhere, invasion. It was, it was bad. Hopefully that won't happen this time. Oh, hello, research. Okay. What to get... First, hopefully I'm. I'll try to get the text that I did not get in the other uh, campaign that I've done so far. Hmm. I think let's start with soil enrichment, or uh, it probably makes sense to make, to start off with one of these industry ones. I got the Xeno mine last time as the space bears, so just to switch it up, I'll get the Automator Rover Bay instead. I guess. All right, let's look at our home planet here. It is large, it's rich, but it is radiated. So that means we're going to have an increased maintenance penalty on all of our buildings. Gravity penalty minus 25. Because it's a heavy gravity, and we are not... Well, we're not accustomed to heavy gravity yet. That's unfortunate. Um, let's go... Oops. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's not our planet. This is our planet. What am I thinking? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Jeez. Um... Medium terrain planet, but poor. Yeah, that makes much more sense. Okay. We'll have that other planet soon. Oh, that's funny. My Rocket Man design has carried over from the quick stream that I did. Rocket Man. Uh, first thing we should do. Hmm. Perhaps get a freighter fleet? Because if we get a freighter fleet, then we can transfer people over to a new colony that we will hopefully get here very soon. So let's start with that. Why not? We should have an explorer ship. There we go, an exploration frigate. Let's look at the map here. Ooh. Okay. Well, let's start by exploring over there. I do like this planet, even though it's heavy G, it is rich in minerals. That's toxic. So maintenance penalty of 50%. Hmm. I wonder... It's probably going to be a long time until we can research heavy gravity adaptation. Um, and food per farmer is zero. That's also really bad. That is very bad. Hmm. Let's see what our little exploration frigate finds. Medium barren, medium radiated, ultra poor, but it does have orbital habitat. And helium. Which gives us a 10% fuel efficiency per source controlled. 
Huh. Well, let's go over there. We'll see if we get lucky and get an amazing planet in our immediate area. Ah. Uh, you know, I meant to disable the GNN. We've seen it before. There we go. You're disabled. All right. Ace. Rich world. It is barren. So that's not the best, but it is rich. And we also has this. Whatever. What does this do? Makes your credit offers appear 10% more valuable in diplomacy. Hmm. It's not bad. And more helium. Hmm. So we already have potential access to three different helium-3 resources, too. Let's colonize Yigari-1. How about that? I will continue. There we go. Right. Barren so that there's no, no actual farming being done. Of course. And we don't have any farm buildings yet. But that's okay. Because we're going to have um, Freighter Fleet here up in just a couple turns. It's all going to be fine. All going to be fine. We do need um, an excess of food there. Alright, so one turn, we got the freight. So, there we go. No more, no more starving. We're fine, we're fine. It's gonna be fine. Uh, what to do here? Don't think I want to mess around with an infantry base. We don't need a star base quite yet. That would just be a drain. So, hmm. Hmm. Let's have it just pump out a couple... I don't even know what, what these things have on them. Chuck Interceptor Mark 1. Chuck Interceptor comes with a bunch of rockets. Hmm. Yeah, sure. That's fine. It's not like we have a bunch of options right now. So we'll have that pump out some Corvettes, or... Corvettes, right? Yeah, Corvettes. What do we got here? Huge, radiated, abundant, heavy... Another heavy gravity planet. Dang it. Hmm, what about this? You enjoy a minus 5% pollution throughout your empire for controlling those. But it is tiny. Abundant, low gravity. That's not bad, though. It's definitely not bad. Do not mind that. Let's get another freighter fleet out. And are we... We're fine. I thought maybe we would be... Starving our other colony, but we're still okay. Food export... Oh, okay, I see. Because this food export is minus one, so we are now at zero. Very good. Very good. Let's pump this down... Uh, this guy down into research. And let's have you explore there. <laughs> What do we got here? Oh! You already have people. A large ocean planet. That's beautiful. And lambda seeds. What does beautiful do? 15% approval to a colony here. Huh, cool. Let's let's go check in with them. And also I should probably get a colony ship instead. Oh, that's gonna take a while. That we, should, we are going to need to spread out pretty quick here. Are you trying to... Uh, uh, yes, let's talk. Hello, fish people. We live a peaceful life of isolation. If you want to buy some fish, we have plenty. Plus 10%... Or plus 10 global approval for 50 turns. If we import their lobster, they can rearm us. Okay, so 200 BC and increase our approval rating. That's cool that that's pretty close. Very cool. Let's continue scouting. I'm not really looking at the anomalies right now because I just don't care about them right now. We'll get to them later. Nice. All right, what's here? Wormhole and a belt that is rich. Hmm, maintenance penalty of 50% though. It's not the best. 
But if we're looking to expand our dominion, you may you may go there. <laughs> Another belt. A small tundra ultra poor and is currently in an ice age. If you really polluted the heck out of this planet, the ice age, the ice will melt. We could also try terraforming it with the proper technology. Really? Just pump out pollution and the ice. I guess okay, that makes sense. Sure. Ultra rich asteroid. Hmm. Let's not go too far. Let's um let's go back in there. Colony ship of 77 turns. Let's do that. How about if we just pump everything into that 33 turns? Huh. That kinda sucks. But we should have an automated repair. Yep, there we go. Rover Bay is up and operational. Lost steel armor. Ah, we're not going to focus on that right now. Let's get the soil enrichment for right now. And we're going to change the production here to a automated rover bay instead. We're going to pump that out and then maybe go back to the colony ship. And I want to colonize Charl Earth 2. Even though it has the heavy gravity. Eventually that will be okay. We need you to come back into our space. Just pumping out interceptors there. 32 tones and turns until we get growth. Jeez. Okay, so you need to go to a friendly colony. Refuel. Uh oh, red crystal spotted. Um, one of the automated drones that we used to map the edge of our known space has returned central data suggesting contact with an alien entity. The probe was destroyed, but before it was destroyed, it was sent back the attached image. It appears to be some sort of crystalline entity. Without a closer encounter, we won't be able to determine its true nature. It may be advisable to prepare some sort of space defenses in case this creature starts seeking bigger game. So this, um, I've had this happen before. They are some deadly little punks. Early in the game. It's a good thing we're putting some Corvettes here. You, I suppose, should just go back out and scout as far as you can. Automated Rover Bay is now finished. Back to the colony ship, although with um, with the red crystals around... With the red crystals around, I may need to build a rocket man. But I forget what the Rocket Man does. Rocket Man. Oh, it has. Hey, look at that! It has a bunch of rockets on it. I think I remember these being pretty effective against the Red Crystals. This is actually the reason why I built the uh, the Rocket Man was to fight them. Hmm. I really want that colony ship, but we need a Rocket Man. Soil enrichment is going to take 70 turns with our current research. Hmm. Hmm. Well, after you put that interceptor build... Higher... Whoa! Charming. Granting a bonus of 20 to the diplomatic tolerance of both your empire and any empire you are engaging in negotiations. No way! Increasing the perceived value of all of our diplomatic offers by 20%. Oh, sweet! Magister Kroll... Master Negotiator offers to join you for a payment of 100 BC now. 5 BC, 5 BC per turn. I'm just a simple country Avnar from a backwoods moon trying to make sense of these negotiations just like you. But if I'm reading this right, this guy kind of negates our race's penalty of their repulsive nature. Almost negates it. Huh. 5 BC per turn though. That's... I mean, that's just going to put us in the negatives, but he seems pretty good. Excellent. Cluck, cluck. Choice. Uh, if y'all want us to do any sort of negotiation, just give me a holla now. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Crawl. He doesn't really give us any bonus for our colonies, so I'll just kind of let him hang out where he is. Now we are at uh, minus one income. That will change at some point. Oh, 
Okay, there's the Cortrazine. Well, let's see, they are aggressive, because I made them that way. Ruthless Imperialist. They value colonies as worth 100% of their normal valuation. Furthermore, if any race has control of a planet that they believe should be theirs, then it can be assured that a war aggression... F oh. Take threats seriously. They're cunning. They like to use espionage. Requiring additional 35% profit margin in negotiations. Oh. With a hard game difficulty. Well, these guys are not going to be pleasant, it seems like. So just to get the trade rights here... Yeah. Hmm. We'll just not do any of that. Where are you? Oh. Oh. Really? Well, we may have found our first aggressive uh, species there. Let's go continue scouting out. I am Indica of the Polyp Symbiosis. Isn't it a great day to make some new friends? I don't know, is it? They value trade right treaties, 50% of their normal valuation. They're prideful. Cannot bear the insult of being threatened. Okay. Place a premium on the value of technology. They value your technologies and theirs at 50% of their normal valuations and hard negotiators because of it being on a hard difficulty. Where are you? Oh, wow. You guys are right there. Hey, how about... How about you and me be friendly? It's going to be rough. So I'd have to give them a medium... Wait, let's see. Because of hard negotiating, so... They would need that. That's a bit much. Hmm. I, mean, I guess. I want to try and be friendly with them. Okay, so now our other freighter should be used for trading. Yes, it is. But we can get another freighter. Which I'm going to have to do. Because I think we can have two. Um, well, now that we know that they're, they, they are there, let's get our scout back. Shoot. I am not ready. Rocket Man is eight turns away. Crap. Confirm. But they're going to be part of separate, separate fleets, though. Oh, no. Okay, cool. Very good. Very good. Okay. Whew. We got the backing up of our Starbase and the Rocket Man in one fight. Okay. We're probably going to need him. Pull them in the range of the Starbase. Is that artillery shots, I think? one Corvette. Hey, look at that! Golden Coin of Defense Medals. Excellent. So, we're going to have to find where they're coming from and then deal with them. And they're, well, actually that's where they're coming from. We have examined the wreckage, or perhaps corpse would be a better term, of the defeated red crystal. The examination has revealed two incredible facts. 
First, the entities are capable of generating their own subspace fields using some sort of resonance within their own crystalline structures, but this discovery pales in comparison to our second discovery. These particular crystals are wired up with some sort of electronic harness. More shockingly, the harness uses components that are clearly of our own creation. Some components even bear serial numbers that can be traced to our home world. Clearly there is more going on here than meets the eye. It should be our top priority to discover the origin of these entities and to unravel just how and why our technology is being used to agitate them to violence. The plot thickens, hmm? Okay, so now we're going to combine these two fleets, going to hang over Chal. Colony ship is being made. We need more research. Alright, so that's going to take care of our food export still. But our money... I still have positive one. We need colony ships. Man, we'll pull you back into here. God, 21 turns. That, it's that damn poor planet of ours. Okay. Fleet has run out of fuel. Oh, our scouting fleet? That's fine. Alright, Rover Bay is up and operational, which brings us to a net income of zero for its maintenance cost. 36 turns, 8 turns. Let's have them pop out a freighter fleet and more check interceptors. I sometimes think that you just don't respect me enough. I think you need to show your appreciation better with money. No. Ah, uh, that's not good. Alright, well the freighter fleet's gonna be up in three turns to be able to transport more food, but the thing is we're not making enough, are we? Or is it just a matter of freighter fleet? We'll, we'll do that for now. Does that take care of the starvation? I think it's... Okay, we just don't have enough freighters out. Okay. Well then, put that guy back on production. There we go. Now they're fine. Now all of our freighters are being taken care of. Food haulers, two of them, and our trade transports for the trade treaty that we have. Okay. Three turns for the Corvettes, that's fine. We um, we may be going into war soon, since we have such an aggressive race somewhat nearby. So I kind of want as many military ships as we can. How many Corvettes do we have now? Uh, three Corvettes, four of seven, so we can get three more for free. We are building one more. Let's grab another freighter fleet after that, and a colony ship after that, I think. Maybe the other way around. No. We may need a freighter fleet to give them more food, so let's do it that way. We really need more researchers, too. Well, maybe after this colony ship is up, then I will pour more into research. Because that's just taking way too long. Excellent, but we needed the soil enrichment. So that we don't have to have as many farmers dedicated to our planets there. Um, two more, then we're going to make the soil enrichment on this planet. It's probably going to be feeding a couple of our planets for a while. Choose research. Cloning center provides a population growth. Uh, no. Neurotoxin bombs. Probably, because I don't like ground combat. We may do that. But I feel like we need another kind of one of our base structures, which is going to be a research lab of some kind. And I think we're going to go with the Imperial University on this one. We're going to have so many people that I think we can allow a lot of them to be devoted to science and production. So we're going to grab that. Last time we grabbed the Astrometric, Astrometrics Lab and we didn't really, or we, I didn't really take or make much use of it. Alright, colony ship is now done. Um... You want my soil enrichment? You guys have mass drivers already? Holy crap. 
Um, you can just shine a little bit more on my leaves, if, you know? Yeah, okay. Really? You need... Well, that no way that's not gonna work. Wow, you guys need that much, huh? All right, I mean, mass drivers are great. I'm willing to make this deal. Mass drivers are amazing, even. Um, I think that's gonna do it for the first episode here. I'm gonna go into the shipyard and make a new. Uh, ship design that incorporates the use of a mass driver because dang those things are amazing so thanks for watching the first episode everyone hope you enjoyed i'll see you next time take care